Okay, we'll go ahead and get started just so we have the full hour. I'm excited to share with you all today. My name is Katherine Skoblik. I'll be moderating this session on nutrition during cancer treatment. So I'll go through what the session will look like, the structure of it. But first, I want to share first and foremost that this is a solving session, and that's why we're all here. The solving session means that there are no bad ideas. This is a no bad idea zone. Everything's on the table, nothing's off the table. I want you to dream really big. Um, nothing's as far-fetched, just go far-fetched, um, lay it all out there. And I think once we start sharing our ideas, and that kind of spurs each of us to have better ideas, right? Just to keep kind of get that momentum going for all of us. So that, that's what we're doing here today. Um, the structure of this session will be that I will force pose the question that we're all solving for. And then we're going to spend a good 10 minutes or so really discussing what some of those experiences have been for each of you. So we can get a really good handle on, I think sometimes just nice to hear that other people experience what each of us experience, but also it just kind of poses what the challenges are. So then we'll spend the bulk of this session solving for those challenges. Um, so let me just start with acknowledging that nutrition during cancer treatment can be a challenge. And the question that we're solving for today in this session, and I do have my notes, so I'm going to look at them because I just want to nail some things and make sure I don't miss anything that I'm hoping that to question or share. But the question we're solving for is how to eat the right foods and, and to do that with family and friends as well. And that's during cancer treatment. So we're looking for new strategies around nutrition and food intake and how to eat. And we're really here today to, you know, can we create a tool? Can we create some great new idea or tool or resource to solve for this challenge that will help so many people? That's what we're doing today. But for the next 10 minutes, what I really want to hear is from each one of you who want to share really what that means to you when the question is, how do you eat the right food? So first of all, what does that mean to you? And then what are the barriers? And then the third part of that question is, what have your experiences been? So whoever wants to lead, just to start kind of sharing, if you've had these experiences, what does that mean to you? Don't be afraid, <laughs> it's just whoever shares, or um, if you've been exposed to even friends having some of these experiences, what are some of those experiences? And what does eating right mean to you? What are the barriers? I'm happy to start. Um, my name is Leanna Levine Reisner. I'm the network director of Plant Powered Metro New York. Um, for me, as the daughter of a cancer survivor, I um, and trying to make sure that I do whatever I can to reduce my risk of cancer going into older age. And um, I've made it a huge priority in my life to um, eat more whole plant foods because I know that those are cancer fighting while other foods that are processed and, and animal-based are, are um, uh, inflammatory and can promote cancer growth. So. What I've been doing in my day-to-day -day life is just putting it forward for for me that um, uh, if you know to make my to give myself the best chances of leaving my family in the right place as an older um, you know as I go into my older years, this has to be number one. I have to do the right thing by my body, and that drives me every day. That having that purpose. Um, and then making sure that I set up my environment for success. I'm reminded of how in the Montessori environment for children, um, when you prepare the environment for kids to be successful, they're less likely to have issues. And I think the same is true for us as adults, that we need to create an environment where we're not tempted um, by the things that are going to wear us down. And, um, and so, you know, my home is a haven for healthy food even though what's around me in New York City is not so much. So that's how I, I make it a priority for me. Thank you so much. No, and that's fantastic sharing. Um, and I think a lot of y'all heard she was more on the prevention side of it. So 
um, and to carry those habits into adulthood too, leading your children that way, that's powerful. Thank you. Anybody else? Because we can keep talking and that's definitely my passion on the prevention side. There's a lot to be said, but how about some others? My name is, I don't know how, let's see, how do I get on here? Can you hear me? I can hear you and okay. see you, perfect. Okay, my name is Patty Dawn. I'm a 15 year cancer survivor. I have a very high rate of reoccurrence, but I'm a Livestrong coach at the Sheboygan YMCA. And Livestrong has taught me so much. One of the things, and I do a lot of different things with the eating. Every morning I have a berries shake with raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, because I know those are very high and healthy for you when you are a cancer person. And before, hopefully, um, I have changed my whole life. Exercise, my new program right now is I have a weight machine program. <laughs> I'm 65 years old and I plan on living till I'm 95. <laughs> and I think Live Strong is one of the most awesome programs I promote it daily. Thank you, that's great. All, again, doing all the right things every day. And I think when we're talking about barriers, y'all are solving for that already. Y'all understand the barriers are setting up your environment properly and focusing on, it's kind of what I hear y'all saying, you're focusing on every day how you're going to go about staying healthy, which is great. And I, I want to hear more. I mean, if people are going through it, I kind of look at, in summary, what that question is you know, how are the issues showing up for you right now? So these are great solutions already to some of the challenges you may be having. Anybody else? Um, my name's Les Bentz and I'm a five plus year cancer survivor, actually still um, in treatment. Um, debatable whether I'm finished with chemo or a few more on the horizon, but um, the challenge for for me is um, I'm doing an integrative program. So I'm doing, um, or was, until um, I had some other side issues uh, developed this summer, but so I'm doing more of an integrative um, approach and doing some supplements, herbal stuff and things as, as part of my regimen prior, even prior to chemo. Um, and so I'm pretty much on a plant-based diet, but I do have um, fish and egg whites um, pretty much other than that, I don't really have any, any kind of meat source, so it's all plant-based. Um, and my wife's really not um, engaged in that eating lifestyle, <laughs> so um, it kind of makes it challenging sometimes, especially when you're going through your treatments. While she certainly offers, uh, I, I mean, she works full-time, I'm working from home, and so, you know, making your own meals um, every every day or even if you try to um, do some food prepping you know like on a weekend um, it's really hard to scale down recipes for like one person to have you know a few meals and try I'm trying not to be wasteful as well so you get tired of having the same same meals um, four or five times a week and um, I, so that's just one of the the, the challenges for me and, I, and I'm like literally diligent. I, I try not to vary at all. I try not to, I mean, periodically go to some restaurants in the area or at least order out at this point with the COVID world. And um, even there, you don't necessarily know what type of sweeteners they use. And I try to ask, but, you know, so you, between trying to food prep, um, trying to just figure out how to navigate, um, you know, giving yourself a break, there's not a whole lot of options around um, with, you know, especially vegan type meals. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's, it just becomes a grind sometimes and you don't even feel like <laughs> making anything or eating and it, or, or you get bored with the same things because they're easy and quick, whatever you figured out. Les, thank you. I think those are probably some challenges that each one of us face, definitely. Um, those are good points. Um, the prepping, it's continuous, isn't it? I mean, the food prep is not continuous, a yes. And uh, you know, there's a joke, and I know you said you're not eating many uh, animal foods, but the joke is always like, how many different ways can we fix chicken? But it's the same thing for anything. If you have 
right? The variety, we get kind of stuck in the same patterns too. Yeah, and, and exactly. And I'll even try to convince my wife, um, had a little success more re most recently, but you know, like just making a base that's, that's kind of like the veggie part of the, of the meal. And then they go, hey, like just make some side chicken or beef or whatever, and then you can mix it up and heat it up, cook it, whatever you want to do. But it's kind of like she's just not not buying in um, uh, yet. Yes, yes. Well, you're good for her. You're helping. You're making her healthier as well. So that's fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Those are very real. Um, anybody else? Because these are great. Let's post some good challenges. Yeah, I have a question. Talk about uh, herbal supplements. I'm always hesitant to take them. I just don't know what's in them, uh, what contaminants might be in them, and I tend to avoid them for that reason. I don't know what your thoughts are about that. Yeah, so I'm I'm not a clinical person. I need to let y'all know that I'm not clinical. I'm, I'm definitely a certified health and wellness coach. Um, and, and just from based on the literature, you're right. I mean, we don't always know because they're not regulated. So I'll, you know, I'll leave that to that part. Um, but what we know just as a culture in the American diet, the few that we tend to be lacking in, and I would also encourage you to be tested for it first, um, that maybe we're, a lot of us are low in vitamin D, many of us are low in calcium, and then there's a big thing around um, the omega-3s, right? They're fatty acids that are definitely, we, um, we can only get them through our diet or the, the fish oils, the DNAs. So um, those are the ones, but I'm not a clinical person. Um, I am happy to share mm -hmm. if there is a clinical person on who can really speak to that. Um, I'm happy to, to open the floor for sharing what you know clinically. Well, I can tell you, with calcium, there's some question about whether you should take supplements or not, that it might be associated with increased heart disease. They recommend if you're going to get calcium, you should get it to your diet alone. Right. So I would just recommend, I would throw that to your doctor. Um, and doctors also have different opinions as well. So maybe check a couple sources, but I'll always throw you back to the clinical side on that. But thank you for asking that question, Martin. It's a good one. If, if I could suggest um, the, the folks, and they have a pretty good, um, pretty good website, and they actually have um, dietitians on staff where I do my integrative um, treatments. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the, it's the Block Cancer Center. It's in, it's in the Chicago metro area. And he's even published a book. It's called A Life Over Cancer. Um, really well done. Um, he's been doing this. Hey, how's it going? Since 1980. <laughs> well, that's good. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to you, Josh. Just some little housekeeping rules. Sorry, Les. Um, if please use your mute, mute wisely. Just when you see, maybe there might be a dog barking in the background or anything like that. But don't forget to come off mute to share. So go ahead, Les. I'll let you finish with that. Um, so anyway, I just want to throw that out there. And, and they have a lot of their own supplements that they've actually developed. So again, while it certainly isn't regulated, but at least. They've, he's worked on the formulations, and so he knows what's going into them. And so um, I, I, they've worked very well for me um, as, as I've been navigating, navigating through. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So kind of what, just to summarize what we heard and then what we're solving for. So I really love some of the ones that share. So Leanna really was on it on the way of um, setting up her environment to make sure she set it for success. And that also was for her children. So I'm a big believer in that, having those foods readily av available, um, having bowls of fruit, as soon as you open your fridge, they're front and center. Um, and so we know that if we make it easy, that's what we'll reach for. So Leanna has that down. It sounds like she's on a roll with the prevention. Um, Patty is on her health path. So she shared that same thing. She has a plan every morning preparing what she's going to eat for breakfast. She already knows she's going for her berry shake, et cetera. So she's involved in a program. And what I'm hearing from those first two people too, is that we are, um, we're in it every day. You're in it every day, deciding already that's your intention. So that's what I'm hearing from them. Same thing with, with Les. He's on a plan. He's bringing his wife along and 
his, the challenges then that we experience are, um, it's not, there's not always enough variety. It's kind of some of the challenges that I hear. It's, um, it gets boring or difficult to prep. You're spending time on the weekend prepping, but you want to make sure you have those healthy foods available, but it's still a challenge. And what are some new ideas around, um, you know, making sure that we have those healthy foods available and getting out of the same routine, thinking of new ideas, but sounds like um, we don't like to waste and, um, you know, even eating out can be a challenge. So these are the things that we're really trying to solve for and really trying to figure out, you know, what are the ideas? And again, just to reiterate, is there a tool or a resource that we can create today in this brainstorming session? No bad ideas. And so the bulk of this conversation then really is, you know, everybody take a turn. If you've had some great ideas that have really worked for you, because what ultimately what Livestrong will do with all this information is you are part of creating this tool. And then they're going to be able to go out and find those resources to pull this amazing innovative idea together. So I, it, I am opening up the floor just to just start discussing what has worked? What are some of these solutions around these challenges um, that we're experiencing nutrition during cancer treatment? I think part of it, just to, to bring in another, another piece is um, communicating clearly with your loved ones and friends that um, going through something challenging doesn't mean that you should re reward yourself with um, rich foods and sugary foods. And I think it's very common when we sort of celebrate survivorship that, it, that it's not about um, uh, you know, these, these rewards of, of affluence, if you will, and that it's more about how do you give yourself, uh, give, your, give your friends um, the direction that, no, this is really important to me to indulge in the healthiest foods that are going to bathe me and, um, you know, in, in support in the process. Um, I know for me, as a, somebody who's sort of building community around healthy nutrition in New York, um, we find that we have some of the best um, experiences with people who are going through cancer treatment by um, just creating space for people to eat healthy with one another. And so it might be to, you know, spend more time with a friend who has uh, other healthy eating behaviors, um, to do potlucks with those friends, to, um, and, and there are these networks out there that actually, you know, support people in um, putting healthy food first. Um, our organization, Plant Powered Metro New York, is doing that within um, different pockets of, of New York City and trying to create a, a sense of um, sort of shared mission that we, we want people to feel healthy and, and, and grow healthy together. Um, I wanted to go back to what uh, was brought up about supplements, um, specifically with, with calcium and omega-3s too, that, um, and I'm, I'm also not a clinician, but I've studied this quite extensively and have led a number of webinars on these topics, so I know these things, um, but with calcium, Often it's uh, about um, people who need more calcium are those who have more acidic environments within their body and you can promote more alkaline environments within your body by eating foods that promote alk alkalinity, which are fruits and vegetables and legumes primarily and to a lesser extent whole, whole grains. And then the, um, a lot of animal products and oils will promote acidity. Um, when it comes to omega-3s, uh, a lot of the fish oil supplements are contaminated with various types of, of heavy metals and toxins. Even if they say that they're pure, it's, it's almost impossible to find such a thing. So we, when we uh, counsel our um, the people <clears throat> who are going through difficult, difficulty with chronic disease, um, the, the number one thing to remember is if you bring down your omega-6 uh, levels, which is the other, the other oils, high fats that are um, non-polyunsaturated, that you're going to um, naturally bring the ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 back in proportion, which would be much, much lower. Um, standard American diet is about 20 to one, omega-6 to omega-3, and healthy proportion is typically four to one or one to one. Um, so to do that, you know, you bump up your omega-3 seed consumption, which is chia, flax, and, 
and hemp seeds, maybe some walnuts, and then um, uh, reduce oils and, um, and again, animal products, which are rich in saturated fats, which will drive up the omega-6. So I'm going to add some resources in the chat box and I'll shut up so other people can talk. Fantastic. No, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. Of course. Great information. No, I love that. And just to kind of add on, because I think what Leanna initially said, besides all your amazing knowledge around that, thank you, is the communication piece. And I found that a lot of people struggle with exactly what you said. So let's say you go out to dinner with friends and family and you just had some great achievement and they're like, come on, let's have dessert. And you really don't want dessert, but they're kind of saying like, what's wrong? You know, they, they're, they're really peer pressure on eating whatever they decided to order. So I do think that communication when you're um, sharing with your friends, like I am celebrating, but maybe there are some words around that to say I'm celebrating and I just, to support me and my health. Like I would love for this just to be a healthy meal and then share what that looks like to you. So you bring people along with you and you kind of nip it up front. So I love that you said that. So I'm sure that some of you have experienced that, but it really is laying that out, how your friends can support you and how you want to celebrate. And there's a lot of literature too around what you said. Um, I think like equals like. So if you are trying to eat healthy, then you're hanging out with healthier people. But I think we can bring each other along too, just in that communication. So those are great. So one big tool for everything in our life is that communication, communication, communicate, communication. So that's one, that's one big piece of it. And so I am taking notes and this is recorded, of course, but I'm just for that we can summarize in the end. But Leanna, I think you kind of spurred a great conversation. People want to add to that with those, what you've experienced in a challenge and how, she, how you can solve for that. Uh, hi, my name is Carrie Green, and I'm also from the uh, Sheboygan, Wisconsin area. I teach the Live Strong program, and I'm also a 15-year cancer survivor. Hi, Patty. Yeah. Um, spinning off of what Leanne is speaking about, you know, as a 15-year cancer survivor, I was very young when I was diagnosed with brain cancer, and I've always thought I lived a very healthy life, mindful of what I ate, exercised, and one of the pieces that over these, you know, past 15 years of I just started reading and reading from a lot of different sources to educate myself. I, I'm a social worker by uh, training, but I found myself gravitating towards the nutritional aspect of all of this because I thought so much of it felt out of my control at that moment after a diagnosis that I thought, you know, what is something that I can pay more attention to and so that I can start to regain my uh, call it, if you will, a little bit of sense of control over everything that was unfolding, but also seeing food as medicine and how do I start to really um, attack the inflammation part of, of this was what I really gravitated towards. So really reading more about inflammation and the foods that, you know, created more inflammation in my body potentially and those that didn't. So I put it sugar and things like that. Um, so I, I mentioned that because I just started with basics and realizing we're all probably in different places with our knowledge of nutrition. And I have no intention of necessarily going to get a degree in nutrition, but um, I am interested in studying Ayurvedic. Um, I'm a yogi as well. And so studying the Ayurvedic science of um, the dates, you know, 5,000 years old of how approach nutrition and lifestyle, which I don't think we can separate out the which is to say how we move our body and what we put into it are so interconnected. Um, coming out of a cancer diagnosis, it's also overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, but this is what I love about the Live Strong program um, is that you know, we, when we start to talk about nutrition, it's like even starting with good, better, best and how we can start to tweak some of these things um, and I use the word tweak a lot because, you know, our attention is captivated and sometimes we feel like we need to do a full overhaul of everything, but we know our human nature is not necessarily to do that. And especially if we're throwing in medication that also is making us just feel very, very off. Um, it's like, where do we begin? Right. And that's what I find so empowering about being part of the Live Strong program at the YMCA, which is you know, meeting people where they're at and just really having these conversations. And less to your point, I just want to throw in, we have incorporated co-survivors as part of our program because we realize if you're trying to make those lifestyle changes in your home, whether it be diet or exercise, you know, inviting the co-survivor or spouse or someone to come in with you makes such a difference because you're trying to make these lifestyle changes in your home. 
Um, and so I'll just I'll also add in as a mom of three kids, um, having those conversations around dessert and sugar has uh, been so important to their upbringing as well. And it's a little bit of a joke, you know, <laughs> apples are coming out for dessert, but you know, we do throw sugar at people as reward systems. And it's so getting into our head and mindset about some of the habits that we've just grown up with and taking a look at changing some of those, but I really am an advocate of tweaking it over the years. So 15 years later, I think my knowledge has expanded tremendously, but I wasn't there for, you know, right out of my diagnosis. It just started by reading and reading more and, um, anyway, I'm rambling on and I apologize for that, but I just wanted to throw little snippets in as I'm hearing these great conversations evolve. So thank you so much for opening this conversation. No, that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing, Gary. Yeah, so a lot of this is already spurring some ideas and experiences. So I think let's keep taking that because kind of what I'm hearing so far are the communication piece um, and then starting with the basics. And I, and I do believe that it's you don't have to change everything at once, but if you're in it every day or some of these things. So I'm really hoping that we can walk out of here with some true steps and tools. So please y'all keep adding on to what Carrie just said as well. Do other people have something that they've experienced um, and something that has worked for them? And I should also add, go ahead. I think a lot of times we like to say, and I've sat through a lot of also different nutrition courses, but I heard a dietitian say, she was teaching a diabetes education class, for example, and she said, you know, what's good for the person with diabetes is also good for their family. And so the theme seems to be um, plant-based foods, more plant-based foods, more whole foods because of the nutrients that come with those and some of the non-nutritive plant chemicals as well. Um, and like to your point, Carrie, not everybody knows about that or Leanna, not everybody knows about that, but can they start understanding that maybe just an apple, for example, what you can pack in a whole food is so much better than anything you could ever buy that's processed. So some of these solutions and steps are one way to communicate with your families is what I'm hearing. So I just wanna hear, how do y'all see that when you've communicated with friends and family when you are making some type of health change in your life? Anything around communication? <laughs> Man, m m none of mine, none of mine really care how I, how I eat. They're going to, they keep eating the normal way. <laughs> That's, so, so how do you handle that? I mean, so you just well, bring so, your own plate. So like, as an example, we're having a baptism for, for my um, most, most recent grandchild and they're having chili. And so I'm just going to make my own chili and bring it with. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. I mean, that's all you can do. I mean, I really don't expect her to make a separate batch just for me, um, but that's literally how I have to navigate, um, you know, all the holiday meals and whatever. I always make something separate for myself, whether it's here or whoever's hosting, and I just bring it along. I, Les, I like that. I'm, I, I do believe in that. So you're, you're, you're just, you're eliminating the own obstacle and you're not also asking somebody else to cater specifically to you. Um, so I do appreciate that you you just are taking care of yourself. And, and I, like, I was kind of in the same boat as Carrie. I, you know, by prior to me getting diagnosed, you know, I was like a f cr crazy five day a week CrossFitter. Um, you know, always active, running, participating in various urban athlons, whatever. And, you know, everybody was like, fell down when they heard that I got diagnosed with cancer because they're like, well, you're the healthiest one of all of us. So, it, so it wasn't that difficult of a, you know, kind of transition, but it just makes it harder when you're having to prep all your stuff yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, no one else really eats like you do. Right. Well, you know, I like this as we're talking about this. I think it also creates more awareness and that's the shift that we want to make in our culture anyway. Um, 
we've just created just in our busyness of life have created some um, we quote lack of time is the biggest obstacle in general just for the general population of why we're not in the kitchen so some of those conversations might be so now we're communicating you're prepping your own food but are there things in the kitchen that some of you do that, you know, that might be incredibly useful to share and put together and as part of this tool or strategy that just will put light bulbs off for people that go like ah i can do that that makes it easier for me anybody anything in the kitchen just specific questions i mean so so one of the one of the things for me to kind of like you know prep some things like i'll do some you know whatever kind of rice brown rice uh, black rice, I'll do a couple of those kind of things, some lentils or whatever, and then um, I'll make some sweet potatoes or something. So then I can like quickly make, you know, three or four different meals out of those. So you're not eating the same, the same kind of thing, even though you're using similar ingredients, you know, like I'll do a, a loaded um, stuffed uh, sweet potato, but I'll make like a Mexican kind of filling for it, you know, with black beans and corn and some, you know, basically like taco or fajita spices. And then I just make that as a stuffed potato, um, you know, as a meal one day. And then another day, you know, you can have beans and rice or, or whatever. So at least, you know, you're not having to kind of make everything from scratch every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there's something called batch cooking too, right? Where you, some people will make the entire bag of rice and then ind individually freeze portions. So that is a definitely a time saver. Um, and I know in the past, and it's not that y'all would want to go out into community and do this, it's much easier to do at home, but there used to be, and maybe still is, where you go to a place where they would, uh, you just lay out your meals for the week kind of thing. Um, so that's something else that we can do. But I just want to hear more stories around how you've overcome some of those um, challenges to share with the group or some type of tool that we can create. Catherine, for me, um, at, in our home, we try to eat as simply as possible, mm -hmm. uh, especially with kids. I also have three young kids. And so in order to create that food environment I was talking about before, um, sometimes, you know, it's just preparing single ingredient things that you can then scoop together and make a beautiful um, array with. And one of my favorite tools is our Instant Pot, which is incredible for cooking whole grains and legumes. Um, and, you know, it's the kind of thing where, I, yeah, I might spend a little bit extra time chopping veggies and throwing them all in, but then I throw them in and I've got the perfect meal within 30 minutes. And it, it is so, <laughs> so easy. I, I like can't express how amazing the Instant Pot is. Um, and we also, you know, we have a high speed blender, but I don't necessarily think that's necessary because if you use the, the KISS principle, like keep it simple, um, mm -hmm. I prefer to like, you know, just have the banana or the apple or whatever it is, um, eat it whole, eat it, eat it clean and no mess, no fuss. It's there and, and you're satisfied and you can move on and just live your life. So simplicity is a core principle in our home. Thank you. That, that to me, I kind of want to take that too and work with that is I think people always say my wife or my husband needs a lot of flavor. And so in my head, I'm always thinking, what do they mean by that? And what they're meaning is kind of opposite of what you're saying, I believe, instead of just getting, and I, I like to tell people, you, you can believe that you can get to that. We're just a banana taste amazing or just an apple, right? You had to even say just. Um, I heard the a past Surgeon General one time say that, could we, he said two powerful things. It was Vivac Murthy. And he said, you know, where we get to where the strawberry, like yum, right in front of your kids, like you want strawberries. Like we just need to start reframing the way we say things or not, ah, I have to go for a walk. Like, hey, let's go for a walk. Just words are powerful, delivery is powerful. So how can we make real full food amazing again? Um, where like to Les's point that we do need to prep and you said too, Leanna, prepping for the Instapot. There, there is a lot to be said of getting back in the kitchen, but how do we bring 
community back to that simple, simple kind of way of, of eating just the fresh foods. I find as I eat these fresh foods that more people are eating them than I thought. I really believe that we have this stereotype like Sheboygan is the bratwurst city. I have brats once a year now. I really find that people are eating much healthier all the way around, not just even cancer patients. When I have guests for dinner, they all like the healthy food. They're happy if you don't have a dessert. Or you can have some fresh fruit in a bowl for dessert and they're happy with that. I just think it's kind of a stereo mind and you just start doing it and people know that you're doing it and they're thrilled about it. I give less a lot of credit. Keep cooking. If, if you were my man, I'd sit down and eat anything you cook. I don't like to cook that much. But you know what? Keep doing it and sooner or later she'll join you. Yes, come take your vitamins. Or your vitamins. Oh, they're all right. I think that's just background noise. Thank you, Patty. Yeah, um, so. I think, um, we, sorry, sorry, Catherine. My name is Denise and I'm living in Indiana and I'm a lip strong coach at our Y as well. Okay. And um, when we're talking about kitchen, I was thinking the spiralizer is a really cool deal. You can get them off Amazon, 30 bucks. Um, and they're great. And then for community in the kitchen, you know, Joe may like squash where Patty likes eggplant or zucchini or something. Um, and you just, okay, what vegetable do you want tonight? And there you go. And what vegetable do you want tonight? And they can spiralize their own. And then you can have, as Les was saying, sort of a base with either couscous or rice or farro or something. So, yeah. And that's, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. So now y'all are making me think. Are some of these tools, so um, Leanna said the Instapot is easy. Well, just for example, my son gave me one and I think it's like anything. You really have to get used to using a new tool because for me, it's still easier to go back to my pot to cook brown rice versus the Instant Pot. That's only because it's new. And so I think you know, I'm thinking along this, you can go online and Google anything for the information. But there's something around um, making some of these easier food prep alternatives that Livestrong can do to help people that maybe are not where y'all are yet, who have kind of figured out the need for food prep. Is there some type of tool that can make it easier for this audience? to prep food easier? Is there some type of uh, platform or instruction that could be useful? Or ha are any of you using a tool or platform that's been useful? Crockpot. What is it? I use a crockpot a lot. A uh, crockpot? <laughs> like, I've never heard of that. <laughs> a crockpot, yeah. New, so for bulk and okay, Denise. The new toaster ovens, you know, that um, that have an air fryer and convection, and they don't take, they take up a little bit of counter space, but they're not that bad, and you can get rid of a couple of other appliances that you have. But that really helps us anytime there's, you know, any anything appliance with a convection bake cuts the cooking time in half, and and we we're on our second one, and we just love them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi. Hi, my name's Abby. I'm from Maine. I'm a Live Strong coach at a Y and I'm a leader of other Live Strong coaches. And um, I found that watching online videos, cooking how to cook, <laughs> that, of course, also online recipes, but yeah. online videos as well. Um, you know, make sure you're tuning into the ones that are going to offer you a healthy plant-based recipe, of course. But thank you, Abby. So, what are what are some of the things the coaches are hearing? What are y'all here? I mean, there's a there's many Livestrong coaches on here, so I know y'all are have abundant information from the stories you hear for what works for some of the people in your classes or that you're coaching. 
Um, and what are some of the solutions that y'all may have come up with may help more of the masses? I'll jump in again, it's Carrie. Um, I think one of the pieces, even backtracking to our prepping of our food are all the decisions that we need to make in the grocery store and what we're choosing to bring into our home. And that's really where we start the conversation a lot of times is just looking at labels and we'll go through and bring in you know, boxes and take a look at you know, what is on this label and if we can't cover it up with one finger <laughs> you know, or pronounce what it is, like just start to question that. And that's just the starting basis of it. Um, other simple, simple things, like one of the things that someone suggested a long time when I first became a mom was set the fruit bowl out on the counter so that people are gravitating. My kids come through, they're hungry. I now have a son who's going through puberty and I've raised two daughters and I'm like, wow, the, boy, <laughs> the boys eat a lot and maybe girls do too, but I'm like, I cannot keep his appetite satisfied. So keeping those accessible things that are healthy options as available as possible, um, I think is a part of it. And then even as a mom too, is just making my kids part of the process and reframing, you know, COVID has actually helped with this. I'll have to say our activities have slowed down a little bit. It's given us a little more time to say, okay, we're going to start this experience and have it take on a little bit of a European flair, if you will, where we're making this a fun interactive thing, you know, where all right, you've got this vegetable, you know, make it a little bit more of an experience that's just part of our dining experience. And we actually invited a friend to come over and he's a chef. And so he gave us some instruction. It was really a fun family experience. And I'd love to do that when we do that with um, Livestrong again and gather because it was just a blast and to make cooking enjoyable and not a chore to make food, which is a center of our society, um, something that's just, you know, enjoyable again having fun with it and like you said looking at fun cooking classes as a start and um just kind of reframing our dining experiences in the home again is um really exciting so but starting at the grocery store has been a really big like eye opener and then even starting your day that's the one other thing i'll say is like how do you start your day what's your ritual patty mentioned one you know what's your ritual that reminds you to eat mindfully or that food is nourishing like the warm lemon water or just something that kind of says, okay, this is the tone I'm gonna set for the day of um, mindful eating. Thank you. Thank you. It's that intentionality again, that you're already focused, like I'm gonna do this. This is what I'm doing. Um, and then I think also to create meaning around that too. So these are all good things. I kinda wanna, kinda wanna park here. You said a lot, Carrie. And, um, I'm not going to miss out on what's important in the grocery store, but I am really interested in the chef because to me, that's a big idea. And I'm thinking already, could every family have just some fun chef, just their own individually personalized chef, you know, just to come in and inspire the entire family. It's one thing you as a mom model behavior is the most powerful thing you can do. We know that more than words, offering fruit, having it available, all that model behavior is powerful. But when you inject a personality or your own personal chef, I mean, that, that's a great big idea that you thought of. You had a friend, you invited that person to come do that, right? So tell me more about that and what that looked like for your family, that experience. Um, well, the chef was from New York and he was laid off. He worked in the Food Network and has this big personality. So that was part of it that has been a lifelong friend. And he was back in Wisconsin, quarantining with his family. He'd had COVID early on in New York. And um, we ran into him and, and all of a sudden we thought about, we are home. I've got our oldest just is leaving for college. So I'm feeling like, what else do I need to teach her before she leaves the home and continuing the cooking evolution. But it was so entertaining. Cause like you said, I was not the one, my husband loves to cook too, but it was this great personality sharing food stories, sharing stories and then telling us the sources of things. And he'd lost his sense of smell um, during COVID with basil was his thing that he just still could not stand the taste of. So that was fascinating too, just, you know, bringing in what we're going through right now. And, but he just had story upon story of how it connected back to food. And it was so entertaining and the food was delicious. And it got us thinking about different ways to eat food. You know, it was just, um, he did a little prep ahead of time, but the smells, these are spices I had not used. It was just an amazing experience. And then we dined with him, we had dinner with him and continued to share stories. And so I think the joy in the kitchen that night was just wonderful. And that's what I was hoping to bring back into our family. And 
um, yeah, if we could all find a way to do that. <laughs> Not everyone has a, a chef who's highly right. entertaining, but. <laughs> yes, no, that's, that's powerful though, that's powerful. Um, it's probably something they'll remember forever as well. So again, meaning, meaningful, very meaningful. But I like the grocery store part because I think um, how we shop also matters. And there's a lot of tools around that. Um, I don't, I don't personally use one because I think I've been in this space so long um, that I just kind of know it's the whole, it's just foods with one ingredient. It's like a bag of brown rice, go for the produce section, that type of thing. But are there tools that people use in the grocery store besides you, Carrie, being a personal coach for a lot of people that are struggling with this, just as a culture, what we're using in the grocery store that helps people choose healthier or make it easier to make healthier choices. Does anybody have any tools they use in their grocery store? Well, actually with COVID now, it kind of, it's, well, and, and me, me going through chemo, I haven't really been out and about a whole, a whole lot. A couple times I have snuck out just because I needed to get myself out of the four walls of my house. Um, but, you know, it kind of makes it a somewhat easier if like, even if you don't do your actual full shopping on, but you can do a grocery list um, for the place that you shop. Like my, I actually even sent my wife a grocery list this morning. She's just going to stop on her way home. But, you know, not having that um, fact that you're going in the grocery store and being even tempted to walk down, you know, again, kind of that center aisle kind of thing. You stay away from all the, all the processed food. And so you're really literally picking only the things that you know, you know, if it is down the center aisles, it's the rices, you know, and beans and, and whatever you need like that. But then the rest of it's basically all produce and, and whatever other, you know, dairy or non-dairy things that you might need. Mm -hmm. So sticking to that grocery list and yeah, it, yes. Um, yeah, so, so even when you get out of COVID, you know, that's kind of a good approach is have, have a list or, or, you know, have, have them go ahead and, and do it. And that way, at least you're not tempted to go in and do all that stuff. You know, most of them now are all offering it even for, so they, you know, they have their shopper pick all your groceries and you just go and pick it up and they drop it off in the trunk of your car. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's been a long time coming. I think COVID just helped them ramp up with that for sure. Yep. Um, this is Patty again. I just say, when I go to the grocery store, I learned this a long time ago, just stay in the outside aisles. Don't go up and down those aisles. There you and go. if you do need rice or something, have that on your list and just, or the beans. But if you just stay in the outside aisles, that's mostly the food we're supposed to be eating. <laughs> yes. So I hear y'all saying like, just bring it back to the basics, that perimeter shopping, um, makes it easier to probably select the right foods. Um, and then reframing. I like the reframing, how we speak to our family and our kids. Um, I like the finger rule. I've never heard that one. Um, Carrie, never heard that one before, but that's another good way. Like, how do you make it simple? Simple tools, simple strategies to make this successful for others and, and truly don't be afraid to experiment there's uh, there's actually a good website that um i got reference or it's called the minimalist baker and and m many of her recipes are usually like probably 10 ingredients or less some are like five six and they're all like you're able to prep them and, and have them done in like less than a half an hour and um she does lots of vegan stuff and so there's plenty of like vegan or plant-based or, or vegetarian they're tons of blogging recipes and, and sometimes I just find like two recipes and a lot of the ingredients are very similar and I start blending mm -hmm. and experimenting and so you know that way it breaks up some of that of um, gets away from the, the stagnant of like one type of recipe or whatever you've tried and um, that seriously it's it's really not that hard um, I know everybody freaks out and panics um, I, I've never actually been, I've always like didn't mind cooking and my daughter's an actual sports dietitian too. So um, she's helped a lot in, in some, some of those things. But anyway, it really, it's not, and especially like with Carrie with kids, 
bring them in and, and have and have them experiment with you cook let, let them cook with you um, make makes a big difference these are all great strategies um, and I like the simple theme too um, not to be afraid and I think what might make it difficult for a lot of people is we are thinking we have to create these big extravagant things where if you're just cooking all the right foods, there's something you can make with all those right foods. Um, and then I hear part of the thing is how, how do you inspire more people to be open to that conversation or how do you inspire more people? Um, like y'all are, y'all are doing it. So, um, leading your children along, just seeing that it's simple, but I'm, I'm happy to hear more stories. Um, and then we'll kind of think what steps we can take to kind of put some of these together for people struggling with nutrition during cancer treatment. Well, during active cancer treatment with chemotherapy, it might have to be a little less strict. What do you eat if you're constantly having nausea and vomiting and malnourished and dehydrated, you probably have to get down what you can get down for a while, and then you can transition to more with the diet people are talking about now, especially once you're in a Live Strong program. Uh, the other thing is at the grocery store, I try to get organic uh, fruits and vegetables if I can. <clears throat> addition I'd have with the grocery store. Yeah, that's good. I think definitely um, during that time, I like that you said that you really need to give yourself permission to get the calories that you need during treatment and then be able to transition to um, that healthy diet that will get you the nutrition that you need. Um, and also, Martin, I do believe it's you know, to buy organic when you can. It's just, you know, the pesticides and the ground that it was grown in. Um, those things matter too when you can. They're more expensive, but of course, there are some good things around that that buy organic if you can. Um, well, I can, I can um, shed a little suggestion on the, the cost uh, factor of some of that as well. If, um, and I and I just started getting a couple a uh, couple of deliveries. There's a couple of these um, organizations that kind of one of them is called Misfits. Um, so they're the fruits and veggies that are a little blend and whatever, and they can't sell. You can order whatever kind of box you get you want, and they're all organic, and they're they're awesome. And there's another one out there too. I can't remember yeah. what that one was, but. So that's a great source if, if people are worried. Plus, you don't waste so much because you can get one like for two, for two people and then we just get them like every other week. So it, just, just a suggestion there. No, there's good resources. I hear those advertised. Yep. So, yeah. So we have five minutes left, y'all. And I, I heard some really good themes through this. Um, and I know just sharing these ideas will just provide more resources from Live Strong, but I think just having this community as well, right, with Live Strong is a, is a great resource for y'all. But I think, has there ever been anything that y'all say, oh, Live Strong is doing this, but it would also be great if they did this too. Like, have you ever thought any of those bigger ideas that would just make it just like perfect in your eyes or what would serve you perfectly where you are today. Is there any any gaps that you've ever seen that you'd like to see? So just to reframe that question, any gaps that you've ever seen that would be useful? So I, I, I love, I think these were big conversations. There were some big things, but it really comes back to the basics, doesn't it? Comes back to our willingness our intention, our decisions to decide this is what we're going to do. And then really just kind of going through it yourself to figure out what will make it easier. Um, so some of you, there's a spectrum, right? Who already get that just 
it's easier just to grab a banana or an apple or make a berry shake, that food prep is important. So I heard some of the tools that y'all suggested that would make food prep easier. We talked a little bit about just making a whole lot of fresh foods. If you make, just prepare a whole lot of vegetables, eventually you can come up with some concoction. Um, and then the, the more fun things, the inspiring things, like knowing somebody that can make it a little more animated, that experience with the chef, for example, um, that just resonated with me. And then the challenges for some are the grocery store. So that very first step of, um, I heard the intentionality of the day. And then once you're going shopping, what does that look like? And what does your list look like? And are you sticking to your list? So what else am I missing that kind of puts all of this in one bucket that then we can make a step-by-step -step tool or process to just make people just have these epiphanies that go like, that's it. Like I can do this. So, so, so is there a place or a way for Live Strong to incorporate as part of their, their website, you know, like a blog or some source where, you know, we can all, you know, see what kind of ideas, um, see what's going on, suggestions from people that work for them, um, just have a clearinghouse. And so everybody here obviously is familiar with Livestrong and it's just a, um, one place we can all go to and either there's like a little newsletter that comes out and says, hey, you know, um, just kind of FYI, don't forget to check in and see there's a bunch of stuff in here. And, um, you know, it's always easy to, I, I it's not easy because then it kind of create it takes away some of our creativity of going to search and look for our own stuff sometimes. But you know, just having one place to go to as a kind of a clearinghouse um, for information, especially um, for the new folks that obviously get that horrible diagnosis or a caregiver or, or whatever, right? That they can go to without having to jump online and start searching on their own. Yes, I love that, and I'm and. I know somebody knows the answer to that. I do not, but I think that y'all will be connected, you know, after this, if y'all chose that feature. And I think that's definitely one question that we'll answer in that email. Cause I'm sure there's a place, right? Livestrong has those resources, but um, that's a great idea, Les. If there's not, then maybe there can be. To feed off that last, we bring in a registered dietitian every session we have for Livestrong so that they can ask the more, like Martin, like you had the question about herbs. I mean, I don't feel well versed to speak on a lot of things nutritionally oriented. I, I have my own intuitive feelings about things and what I've read, but I am not a licensed dietitian. So we bring that person in and it makes me think, could there be a platform online? We're getting more and more used to using these platforms that we could have something through Livestrong, the foundation that offers an educational component that could be introduced and streamed right into a classroom, a Livestrong classroom, for example, um, that might talk about dietitian and I think, or talk specifically about nutrition and diet um, right after a cancer diagnosis, maybe, you know, for those of us that are further out, you know, as we've evolved in our thinking about dietary, there could be a few different segments on that. Um, there could just be a resource tool that about when they're ready to and the information, but then it's also breaking down the behaviors and the habits and our thinking about it. So I think the other piece of this whole conversation that I'd love to not have us get too far away from is this, the joy of eating again and reclaiming that bit of our lives that has been taken away or we've been forced to tweak. And it can be so joyful to eat healthy and our bodies are gonna feel that. And especially if we're also introducing an exercise component to it, they, again, they just go hand in hand. It's mind, body, spirit, and it's just not, you know, we can't think of it in isolation with each other. So I think we've got to continue to bring that theme back to this conversation too. Yes, perfect. And I agree. It goes all together. Y'all, we're at the end of our time. Thank you so much for the discussion and for joining in some of these solutions. I can't thank y'all enough. Um, and I really wish y'all all the best and, and great health um, and a really happy, happy, fulfilling life. Thank y'all so much. This is great information. Thanks.